do all laughing, and two, to, <laughs> uh, to let you know that we are going to have that marriage uh, outing. Uh, it's going to be, I think, next week. So if you haven't signed up for that, make sure you do today. So will you stand to your feet? Let's worship the Lord together. was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not Till I met you. They call her name. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day. exciting I'm here with Larry Harden uh, Larry and Tracy serve on our greeting teams and uh, you've probably seen his smiling face before <laughs> um, 
on Monday, uh, Larry and I met and we talked and talked about his relationship with Jesus and he accepted Christ into his heart. And now we're going to follow a baptism this morning. Uh, so, if Larry, you would be after me. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. And I accept him. And I accept him. As my personal Lord and Savior. As, as my personal Lord and Savior. In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, we baptize you, Larry, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about right there. My name is Dennis Dove. I'm the executive minister. I want to welcome you to Shelby Christian Church and to those watching online. And there's a reminder that after I pray, we have communion stations set up uh, around uh, the room, and it's double cups, so you got the bread and the juice all in, in one cup, and the offering boxes are there as well. So this week we're talking about parenting. So as I was trying to, to prep for the communion meditation, I thought, like, okay, what's my good parenting story uh, that I can tell? Uh, you all. But one story kept coming into my head. So I'm a sports guy. So grew up playing sports through college. My kids all grew up playing sports through college. So I've been to a lot of games, right? But I'm not one of those crazy people that yells all the time at the referee that don't know what they're talking about because I know what I'm talking about, right? So, so I try not to yell but I don't wear anything Shelby Christian when I go to the games, you know, just in case. So that's kind of where I am. But when my, my oldest daughter, Rachel, who's now past college, was four years old. She was playing here in the three to five year old soccer league indoors. And uh, I was up on the walking track where the parents watched. And if you've never seen a three to five year old soccer game, they're all in a bob, right? And occasionally the ball will roll out and if it's rolling right towards the goal, you have a shot, right? You know, because that's the only way you're actually scoring. Well, that, that happened, and my daughter was running for her first goal, and I'm sure what would be an illustrious soccer career as a dad, right? And there's a kid running next to her. The goalkeeper was like playing in the net, so wasn't even paying attention to what was happening. It was an obvious, this is it. And as she's running, the, the boy next to her fell down. And my daughter like stopped and turned and helped him up. So I, as the, the caring dad from up top, yelled, no, right? <laughs> so immediately when you say something, you're like, yeah, that was wrong, right? You know, so I apologize to my wife, right? You know, and all those kind of things. And that story comes back in my head a lot. Because what I learned from that and what I told her, even though she was four and didn't understand anything at that point, was like, never let your goals stop you from helping others. And I do that, like, whenever I'm in that situation where you have to make something, that me yelling no comes up. And I try not to let my goals stop me from helping others. You know, in, in the Bible, it talks about how we're supposed to love God with all of our heart, soul, strength, mind, and then love our neighbors as ourselves, right? And at times we fail in that love. And we let our goals keep us from that. But God never fails in his love for you guys, for me. Even though we don't deserve it, he sent Jesus down to die on the cross for us. So as we come to this time and think about that, just think about God's love for each and every one of you guys. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for a chance to worship you. Hope that this is pleasing to you, Lord. Thank you for, for your love. Thank you for sending Jesus down to die for us. What more could you have done for us? Amen.
Church, as we uh, just continue this moment of worship, I just want to invite you. You don't have to stand during this next song unless you just feel like you need to in just moments of worship, but pay close attention to the lyrics of this song. And sometimes we can go about our weeks and weeks become months and years. And I believe this is a special time always when the believers of God can come into the house of the Lord and worship God together in this congregation, in this unity. So we just pray that these words would be a prayer for you tonight.
so beautiful. Just our voices on that chorus. And then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. It's beautiful. Then sings my soul. Father, thank you for being in this place. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for the message that we're about to hear. May it find a home in our heart, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can be seated. church have we had church already or what man that's what it's that's what it's all about that's what it's all about how many of you all were here Friday night for Chanda Pierce <laughs> oh bless your hearts she got away with saying stuff I've dreamed about saying for years and couldn't say in fact I think I'm next if we have her back I'm gonna like feed her material ahead of time of the stuff uh, that I want put out there man it was a great great this place was packed this place is absolutely packed. I mean, imagine like right now, plus 140 more chairs that we had in it was packed. And it was an awesome, awesome, awesome time. We haven't done that like in, I don't know, let's say two years, I'm just saying, uh, since we've had a, been able to have a packed house. And so it was awesome. Hey, if you're new here today, we may, this is a great day to be here. Important, important day. I'm glad you're here today. But stop at the I Am New Wall or one of the tents outside on your way out because we got a gift for you uh, that we want to hook you up with today, okay? Uh, and so I want you to make sure and do that. Don't forget, like Stu said, like the video, the marriage uh, date night this Saturday night uh, you can sign up for that in the back and the guys that help us get the curtains up do that hey we are in this series we are in this series called better called better we're focusing on getting better better as people better in our relationships better in our marriages better in our families better in our parenting better because perfect is not possible so we just want to get better that's what we're working toward is just getting better and I got to say right now I got a huge shout out of thanks uh, to my buddy Clayton Hensel uh, and Jerry Harris at the crossing in Quincy Illinois uh, that gave us the idea for this whole series and shared some stuff with us and if you're ever traveling in the Quincy, Illinois area. Now, I will say, I don't know why you would be, but if you're ever in uh, that area of the country, and in fact, they're on like on, right on the Mississippi River, Illinois, Missouri, Iowa, kind of right all there together. They are a church that has 13 campuses in three different states, and none of the cities they're in are as big as Shelbyville. And they are averaging like 12,000 people a weekend. They are, they are killing it uh, for the Lord. So if you're ever anywhere up there. One of the coolest campuses they have is in Hannibal, Missouri. Anybody know where that, where I'm going with that? In Hannibal, Missouri, the old Mark Twain Theater. They now own it and have church there. That's the coolest thing in the world to me uh, to, to do it. So I just want to shout out to them. And today we're going to, today we're going to cross some lines. And, and so just, just hang with me till the very, very end, because today we're, we're in this part of this series. We talked about marriage at the first part. Last week we started talking about parenting. I'm going to talk about it again today and about raising our kids. And then Jason's going to talk about that next week. Uh, and then we got two more weeks in the series. So that's kind of where we're going with this. But we're living in a different world. Things are different than like when I grew up and when a, a, a lot of you guys grew up. You know, when I grew up and was in like middle school and actually started realizing, you know, that, that you know, 
girls and like all that, you know, like wanting to be on the phone and stuff like that. If you were a really cool cat in middle school and in high school back in that day, you were the one that convinced your mom and dad to go to Radio Shack and buy you a 70-foot phone cord. Now, if you're not that old, you they're like, phone cord? What are you talking about? Like, you're talking about the charger thing? No, just like a phone cord because you could have it because the phone was, get this, remember they were actually plugged into the wall. Remember they used to be on the wall, that kind of phone, all right? And with a 70-foot cord, you could go down the hallway into your bedroom, close the door, and you could have that private conversation. You were cool if you had that cord. And, and then we were, like, then the whole TV thing was going on. You know, a lot of us in this room can remember when there were three channels and you actually had to stand up to go change them. Remember that? And, and then you would argue as a family about oh, whose turn it was to walk across the room all 10 feet across the room to change the channel because it was so hard to do and so we did that and, and then we then they started putting stuff in, in on color and then cable tv and some people were convinced that the apocalypse was coming when we introduced cable TV. Little did they know what was coming around the corner. But there was all this debate with, you know, can we have cable? Can we have cable? Can we do this? What about HBO? What about Showtime? What about Cinemax? Oh, God, we do that. You know, we all, they, these were like end of the world discussions. They were important discussions, but little did we know what was coming. What was coming? But we're like all this, like, and we wanted to protect our kids, protect our kids. How many of you had parents that wouldn't allow you to watch shows certain shows that were on like network TV growing up. Uh, yeah, like we would, <laughs> it was all, I love my mom to death, please don't let her watch this. Uh, we, I'd come home from school in the afternoon and I wanted to watch Dark Shadows. You might remember Dark Shadows? All right, I wanted to watch Dark Shadows and my mama wouldn't let me watch the Dark Shadows, but she was watching Days of Our Lives. I'm like, I'm trying to figure out the difference now. You know, and they still do. They're like in their 80s and 90s, and they can, Mar Marlene is still alive, you know. And you know, <laughs> some of you are like, what is he on today, okay? So, so we went through all that. And then we started, then we started gaming. And, and you know, we thought gaming was like, okay, I don't know about this. Can I really let my kid have this PlayStation? This might be so evil. And then the second Genesis, we had no idea what was coming with gaming and with devices and with all those things, not to mention computers and then the internet and the World Wide Web and parents for the last 30 years have been every generation or every partial generation have been navigating this new thing that was like, this is going to be the end of all humanity because it's going to introduce so much and we had no idea what was coming in the golden rectangle we were so worried about all that other stuff and now we're like for a 12 year old birthday party here's your iPhone 14 enjoy and we got no idea what's really going on. Kids have phone, they've got all those things we're worried about, cable TV, internet, all those things. Now they're all on here. There was a time when our kids were isolated from the craziness. Now, there's been crazy stuff like from the beginning of history, right? If you don't believe that, read the Old Testament. I mean, there's been some crazy messed up stuff from since the Garden of Eden. We just didn't see it in real time. All right? And now it's all right there. And so there was a time, there was a time, and I know it didn't, stay with me. If I, if I step on your toes, hang in there. I'm getting your neighbor in a minute, all right? Um, <laughs> we, we, we bend over backwards trying to protect our kids. I don't want to watch that. My mom didn't want me to watch Dark Shadows. I don't want to watch that. Guess what? I went to high school and for, Dark Shadows was nothing. And that was in the 70s, all right? And, and, and we try to protect our kids and we try to make sure they go to just the right school. And we put them in this school and that school and we homeschool and we do all, and I'm all for all of those things. You do you. You do what makes sense to you because I will support you 100%. But if you think by doing those things you are protecting your kids, you may be just isolating them temporarily and when they get away watch out I've seen that happen a bunch too 
So what are we going to do with this? How do we navigate this ever-changing, this different world? Here, here's what Jesus said. Jesus said this, Matthew chapter 9, No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch will pull away from the garment, making the tear worse. Neither do people pour new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Huh. The new patch of technology that we're dealing with has to be navigated properly. And we can't navigate the new technology with the old patch that our parents or grandparents tried to use. We can barely navigate it with the old patch that we used last week. And so we need to be aware of what's really going on in the world. We need new methods. And our desires may be the same, and our principles may be the same, but our methods have got to move with the time. And we can't change the truth. Some of you remember, I've used this illustration before. Some of, some of you know Cindy Crawford, right? Cindy Crawford. Remember when Pepsi hired Cindy Crawford like 20 years ago? Because they were about to lose all market shares to Coca-Cola. And so they got Cindy Crawford in blue jean shorts buying Pepsi out of a machine and revolutionized their company. All right. And then Coke started realizing that you know, the, the gap was closing. So Coke said, we got to do something. You know what Coke did? They developed new Coke. And new Coke was never good Coke. All right. They changed the product, not the packaging. Pepsi got a new logo, a new uh, marketing plan with Cindy Crawford. And, but they kept the product the same. Coke changed the product and almost went bankrupt. We've got to make sure that we don't change the product as we navigate these new and different times. So how do we navigate this world? God gives us some clear instruction on how we are to navigate, how we are to live, how we are to parent our kids. And here it is summed up in one verse, okay? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Look what it says. Above all else, number one, numero uno, top of the list, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. We got to be committed to guarding our heart and in turn guarding our kids' hearts. We got to be committed to doing like the airplane model when the mask dropped down and the steward, stewardess to tell you, be sure to put on your mask first or you won't be able to help the person next to you who might need that help. We got to guard our hearts so we can help guard the hearts of others. And, and I also, all the time I hear parents, you know, uh, frustrated with social media, and that's legit. There's plenty to be frustrated about. This is one of those hang on to your seat moments. You might want to take some pictures or jot it down or just try not to shriek. The link between social media and depression, it's staggering. Some studies are showing that there is a 66% increase in depression tied directly to social media. You know why? Because you get on social media. What do people put on social media? the best of the best you know and you get on there and you look and every woman that's doing like 900 selfies that's a that's a whole stigma in and of itself we've got counseling for that but but you get on there and like a 900 selfies and other women are looking at your selfie going i just don't match up they have no idea that you understand this thing called filters filters can make anybody look good all right and, and, and then the guys that are on there, they all look like they just stepped right out of GQ. And some of us going, yeah, I ain't got it, all right? And, and, and so we're trying to match up that, and it's causing depression at the highest levels. People get on there and they start posting about their kids. You know, nobody gets on there and posts that their kid flunked three classes and didn't make the team. Everybody that gets on there and posts about their kids, my kid scored four touchdowns last night, my kid is on this, on this, and this, and you're thinking like, I'm just trying to survive. And it leads to depression. Since smartphone, this will get, since smartphone, listen to this. Since the introduction of smartphones, there has been a 65% 
increase in the suicide rate of young ladies grades 8 to 12. That's what depression will do to you. Instagram, Snapchat, and this thing called TikTok, if you don't know about it, you need to figure it out. They are driving kids crazy. And adults. Kids with smartphones, they say, statistics show they're getting one less hour of sleep a night than their peers who don't go to bed with their phone. And this is the one that hopefully will scare the you-know-what out of you. 62% of teenagers say they have received nude images on their phone, and 40% say they've sent them. The golden rectangle is dangerous. And so we've got to know how to navigate it. We've got to know how to navigate it. And how many of you have, like, like we had this ongoing discussion in our house, all right, about, is this thing really listening to me? <laughs> all right? And listen, here's, it's called an algorithm. It's a big math thing. And here's how they use it, all right? The algorithms are designed, especially if you click on something, I promise you, you're getting 42 ads for that thing from 42 different places that day. But even if you scroll over it and slow down, you're probably going to get 25 ads, all right? Now, so whether or not they're like in our house, like the debate is, I think it's all about the algorithm and what you're actually looking at because it's very much tied to it. It's very much tied. You look at something, stay with me. You look at something, whatever that something is, you look at something and it's going to keep popping up a whole lot more. I know that. I know that. Now, whether it's listening to you or not, and you're like, I, I just wouldn't be able to sleep if I was living in that world thinking that. But Kim and I argue about that all the time. She's convinced they're listening to every one of our conversations. Uh, I think it's just what we're looking at on here. But either way, either way, either way, right? It's dangerous. It's problematic either way. And so what's the Apostle Paul tell us in Ephesians chapter 5? He says, be very careful how you live. <laughs> especially in the age of the golden rectangle. Be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days that we live in are evil. See, with these things, we've got to figure out how we're going to do with this. You've got three options as I see it. Three R's. You might want to write these down. You can reject it, or you can receive it, or you can redeem it. Now, when it comes to the golden rectangle, you can choose to reject it. But some of you choose to reject it. I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Twitter. Bless your heart. You're probably healthy, all right? But, but, but social media is bad, and we're, gonna, we're not going to participate in it if we're going to reject it. But that's getting harder and harder. I hear a lot of parents frustrated. Their kids are always on their phone <laughs> without realizing— I mean, you own it. You can take it away. And if they're on your plan, I can, I've got 10 on mine. I'm a good dad, granddad, all that stuff. I can turn them all off right now in the middle of service. And there'll be nine other people on this planet absolutely freaking out if I do that. All right? But I've got the control. All right? You get phones, and we get the nicest ones. I just like upgraded to the one that's three generations old because my, my Nokia flip phone stopped working. And, you know, but we want the newest. You know what? There's, I'm, there's, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm enlightening you. Do you know that you can even go out there now and you can buy an apparatus like this that's called a light phone? And I know moms, oh, I just got, they just, I want to make sure they have phones. I want to know where they are. Okay, I'm helping you right here. You can buy these light phones, and guess what they do? You can talk on them and text on them. You can't do anything else. But if you're in that, I just want to know where my kids are, and I want them to be able to get me if they're in trouble. Get, light phone, light phone. They can talk and text anytime, and you can too, all right? 
And, and like, I just wish my kids would put the phone down. Any of you got little kids? You don't have to raise your hand here. You probably don't want to right now. Uh, but if you got little kids and, and they, they, they keep coming up to you, they keep wanting your phone. Like, you, you're, and they keep like, yeah, I want your phone. Like, and like our, our two-year-old's doing it, all right? I want your phone. You know what I think part of what they're doing is? I don't want your phone as much as I want you off your phone. As much as I want your attention as much as I want your time. So before we start throwing a bunch of stones at our kids for being on the phone, some of you are really struggling right now because yours just buzzed and you want to check it and you're scared to death to look at it right now because of what I'm talking about. (laughs) I get it. I get it. And so we've got to make these decisions. I'll be honest with you. The more I worked on this message, here's what I've done this week. And and you probably need to know this because it's how some of you talk to me. I've deleted Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, Instagram, all those from my phone. I still have those accounts. I still have those accounts, but I won't see it if you message me. I won't see it until I get back on my computer and then I'll only maybe see it. And if you're sending me videos on Messenger, I won't ever see it because the worst thing that you can do computer-wise in the world is open a video that somebody sends you on Messenger because it's about to crash your computer. So I won't do it. So here's it. I'm available. I'm available. You need me? You call me. Text me. And, and don't say I don't have your number. 95% of the people sitting in this room right now have my number. And if you want it and don't have it, come up here, I'll give it to you. I don't care. In fact, 3216351. Text me, call me anytime. Email me. Remember when we, we thought, remember when we thought email was the coolest thing in the world? And now we send out 927 emails a week, half of which never get opened. Like, we're struggling figuring out how to navigate this new technology. And then companies and corporations and churches are trying to figure out, okay, we've got 927 names in our technology database. Which ones of them need text messages? Which ones of them need email? Which ones of them need Facebook? Which, like, we can't figure it out because we've gotten too intelligent for our own good. And maybe, maybe we just need to reject some stuff, okay? The second, you can receive it. You can choose to be, here's the beautiful part of it. Free will applies to cell phones as well, right? You can choose to have them. You can choose to use them. It's your choice. Just be wise. It, It allows some connections that were previously impossible. One of the coolest things for me is I, I, I really enjoyed college. I loved my college time, and I loved playing athletics in college. And we try, I've been, when you travel across the country in a 15-passenger van with a bunch of smelly, sweaty dudes, you get to know each other pretty well. And there's a bunch of those guys that I played ball with for four years that I haven't seen in person since the day we walked across stage and got our diplomas and went our separate ways. But because of Facebook and Twitter, now we're reconnected. A couple of them that a couple of them may be watching right now because a couple of them watch our church and they claim us as their church and they live in California. You can, you can receive it. You can receive it if you're smart with it. You can see friends, good, but, but you can also see people you don't want to see, all right? And so you've got to figure it out. Or what if we didn't, what if instead of just, just rejecting or just receiving, what if we chose to redeem it? What if we chose to redeem it? That's where I would say, and I've told you guys this before, it is perfectly fine with me if a picture comes up on the screen or a Bible passage or a, a, any kind of point about the message or you hear something that you can use to redeem your network. What if we started filling up the social network with redeeming things instead of the junk that gets in there? Because it's an incredible tool if we're smart about how we use it. But really, parents, what we got to do is we got to navigate the time that we do have. And that's what I want to spend the rest of our time, we're, and we'll be done. I just want to talk about time and how important time is. One of the most important factors in your kids' development, that's why they're saying, I want your phone. No, I just want you off of it. I want your time. 
The time is so important. I want to give you some math equations. You might want to jot these down or take the pictures and think about what they mean, okay? If you think about it, time over time is history. In other words, over the, the bottom quality, the denominator the there, the total time you have, the amount of time that you spend with the time you have will create history with your kids. Remember last week? Remember last week? And we'll come back to this a couple more times. Remember last week we were talking about moving from, uh, moving from control to consulting? The more time that you invest over time, the more history you create, and the better you'll present yourself to be a consultant moving forward. Think of it this way, love over time creates worth. One of the reasons that these things are so dangerous is just where kids are finding worth today. Kids are finding worth on here instead of with the people that they should be finding worth with. And so love over time will create worth. And if you lose time, your child will not have a true sense of their worth because you didn't pour it into them. Let's keep going. Words. Words over time is direction. If you lose time, that's that consultant part. If you lose time, you won't be able to give the words that are necessary to teach and to coach and to move forward. What about stories? Stories over time gives perspective. You know, your kids and your grandkids need to know about your parents and your grandparents and your great-grandparents. Because here's what's going on in our world. You're, if you've got kids under the age of 10, they are as clueless about the generation that went through the Depression as the people who went through the depression are clueless about this generation. What if we just shared stories that gave perspective? Here's a big one. Tribe over time. Whether you call it circles like we did a couple weeks ago, tribe, everybody needs a place to belong, right? Why was Cheers such a popular TV show? Why was the concept of Malone's such a popular concept? Because it was a place where what? Everybody knows your name. We need, our kids need a place to feel like that's where I belong. That's where I'm supposed to be. And so that comes back to not them, that comes back to us creating a place where they want to belong. And what about this one? Fun. Fun over there. When's the last time you had fun with your kids? When was the last time with your kids you did something that you belly laughed, you laid in the floor and rolled around, and you weren't sure if you didn't need to go change your drawers? <laughs> Chanda could tell you all about that if you were... Like, let's just, what if we just had fun with our kids? You know what? If you have fun with your kids, that will create those other things because then they'll want to hang out with you. You know what I'm worried about right now? <laughs> As I'm getting older, I'm just trying really hard not to become the grumpy old man that's telling people to get off my grass. <laughs> I'm trying really hard not to be that guy, all right? Because when we just have fun, fun over time will create connection. And the reality that we need to understand is You've only got so much time. I did some math this week, all right? And what I found out was that from the time your child enters kindergarten until they graduate from high school, they will be alive and breathing on the planet 4,745 days. That's 113,880 hours that you have. There is, in these three jars, there is one penny in, e in these three. If you add them all up, there is a penny in here that represents each of those 4,745 days that you have with your kids, all right? This is, this is it. This is for 13 years, these pennies. This is, these are the days that you've got with your kids, all right? All right? Now, of those days, guess what? You and they are going to sleep. 
On an average, people sleep eight hours a night. Now, I know, I know some parents of preschoolers go, I would kill for eight hours right now. Trust me, don't worry about it. They will be teenagers one day and they catch up, all right? And you'll be trying to wake them up at three in the afternoon, all right? So anyway, let's just say eight hours average. Eight hour average sleep is 37,960 hours or 1,581 days or exactly 33% of all the time you got from the time they're in kindergarten until they graduate high school. That's it, all right? Guess what? Hopefully, you as the parent, you, one of the biblical instructions you have is to provide for your children. How do you do that? You work. Don't wait on incentive programs, that's another sermon, but you work, all right? You work, all right? On average, you work, guess what? This is kind of interesting. On the average, because we're talking about kindergarten through high school, right? You work about the same number of hours on average a day as your kids are in school. So whether you're looking at this from your perspective or the kid's perspective, five hours a day, eight hours, uh, eight hours a day, five days a week, let's say 50 weeks a year, that would add up to 26,000 hours or 1,083 days. You put these two together, you got almost 20, oh, a little over 2,600 out of the 4,700 days that you have. This right here represents what's left over. These are the miscellaneous or discretionary hours that you have to choose from, okay? Now, national, and this is all based on just national statistics and actual math. 365 times 13 is 4,745. That's the number of days you got, all right? The national average that is collected from these, especially smartphones. You realize if you have a smartphone, you can go on here and look and see how many hours a day you are on the screen, all right? You can find out how many it is. On average, nationally, it's five hours a day. Five hours a day. Now, before you're like, yeah, I've been telling my kid they need to get off the phone. No, 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 no. You are included in that average. All right? You are included in that average. And so at five hours per day, 365 days a year for 13 years, that's 23,725 hours or 988 days of this, all you got left, of this, all you got left. And so all of a sudden, you don't have much left. You're wondering what this one is? A lot of people in the world today, maybe some of you guys go, well, we're going to go to church. We're going to count on the church to take care of our kids. You know what the national average is for people who claim, this is not, the, this is not just general popular, people who claim to be Christians, people who claim to be Christ followers currently attend church on the average 1.8 times per month. All right? 1.8 times per month, and I did the math for that. If you're here an hour and a half, the service goes a little bit long. Dave got wound up. Okay, whatever. If you're here an hour and a half, 1.8 times per month, that's 421 hours or 17 days in those 13 years that we got your kids. And a lot of parents are counting on the church to make sure my kid comes out okay. That's why church camp's such a big deal to us. Like that's a hyper you know, like exponential number. Like we get them the whole time there because otherwise 17 days in 13 years and we're counting on this time to make sure our kids get to go to heaven. We want to be there. We want to help. But we can't make the total difference in 17 days. It's one of the reasons we added Thursday night worship. If you haven't been to our Thursday night worship, it's booming. Because there are people in our community that can't come on Sunday. 
They work. They've got to, they've got to be in Lexington. I know some folks are going to be in Lexington on the weekends taking care of mom and dad because their siblings do it through the week. And the weekends is their turn to go take care of mom. They can't be, so that's why we can do Thursday night worship because we're trying to raise this number. We're trying to give as many opportunities as we can to get people to where they can be to hear God's word. Because here's the beauty of it. It's like, it, okay, in, in this 17 days, the, the only good, the only upside of this is hopefully, because hopefully you're not just dropping your kids off. That's a different sermon too. And you and I just need to talk about that personally. All right. <laughs> you might see another side of Dave come out. But anyway, hopefully... That while we got your kids for 17 days, we got moms and dads and we're teaching a little bit of Jesus. So it's kind of raising the odds a little bit. But come on. Of people who say, I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus. How about you? Yeah, come on and join me. 1.8 times a month, we'll go have our Jesus on. You, you, want, to, you want to try an experiment? Turn to that person that came to church with you this morning and say, honey, I'm going to be home 1.8 times this month. <laughs> see how that works see how long that works and we wonder why the golden triangle is such a problem listen Paul said this I have the right to do anything yeah you do you got the right to buy whichever one of these you want have all the plans you want have everything you got the free will your choice but not everything is beneficial he said I've got the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. No one should seek their own good, but the good of others. I'll give you two challenges and then we're done, just about. Challenge number one. I hope this has alerted you enough, that interested you enough. Next Sunday night, a week from tonight at five o'clock, we are going to have a seminar here called Hidden Dangers. A young lady in our community that has studied, knows all about this, can tell you everything you need to know about where to find what's going on in your kid's world. And we're going to have a seminar from 5 to 6.30, which is the same time as our middle school worship on Sunday night. So here's the deal. If you think you want to come to that, would you text me or call me or email me this week simply so that we can decide which room we're going to put it in? I hope it needs to be in here. All right? I hope it needs to be in here. Because parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, you need to know what we're going to talk about. The second challenge is this. I want you this week, in the next seven days, just like we did the date night challenge, I want you to pick two nights this week as a family and say, on these two nights, we're going to turn off all the devices in our house for two hours from six to eight o'clock. <laughs> Some of you are like, what are we going to do? <laughs> I don't know. Cook a meal together. Go for a walk. Sit down and talk. It's supposed to be beautiful weather this week. Sit outside. Just do something. You say, well, I'm single. Well, find some other single people and go for a walk and go out to eat. Or just turn the devices off and see what God might do in your life. See, what a lot of us are doing with these is trying to escape. We wonder why our kids are getting depressed from here. It's because they're watching mom and dad escape on here. What are we trying to escape from? What if we let the presence of an almighty God? I mean, did we have a moment earlier when we're all standing and saying, I just want to be in your presence, but not from six to eight, two nights this week. I'm going to do that on Sunday morning, 1.8 times a month. What if we just like, instead of hiding from stuff, went into his presence and shared stuff? And understood, we've only got so much time. Here's what I want you to do. We're not standing up. Well, we eventually will, but right now we're not. Go ahead and kill the lights back there. If you are here today with somebody special that you probably woke up with this morning, all right? Would you hold their hand? Especially if you still got kids at the house, or maybe like me, now you're the, that you're helping raise grandkids, just grab and hold on tight. 
And decision time, if you want to talk about accepting Jesus, I'd love to talk to you, Jason, with Bob, as soon as service is over. Right now, the decision we want you to make is we want to get serious, serious about making our family better. Rachel has written a song that you guys need to hear about how special it is to be a mom, to raise your kids. So make some decisions as you listen to her sing. song. Well, let's uh, just continue. It's like Pastor Dave said. Let's just, you know, just try to continue to live out that. Let's love our children. Let's love our families. And let's go change the world together. Y'all have a great day.